Financial inclusion has been a great challenge across the world, especially in Africa, with great opportunities for financial services on the micro level. The value of point of sales transactions made in Niger jumped to 3.01 trillion naira in the first half of 2021, with a total volume of 462.11 million transactions in the same period. Now, these represent a 50% increase compared to the 2 trillion naira recorded in the corresponding period of 2020 and a 10.3% increase against 2.72 trillion naira recorded in the second half of 2020. However, stakeholders want the Association of Mobile Money and Bank Agents of Nigeria, AMBAN, to stem the rising trend of alleged POS customer data mining, which has led to people's money being stolen from their bank accounts. We will focus on these issues surrounding mobile money operations in Nigeria, the opportunities and the future of it. Welcome to Business Insights on PLUS TV Africa. I am Justin Akadonye. Now, cooking gas price, scarcity of diesel, as well as Nigeria's public debt took center stage in business Nigeria this week. Take a look. The liquefied petroleum gas retailers branch of the Nigerian Union of Petroleum and Natural Gas Workers on Wednesday raised the alarm over the recent rise in price of liquefied petroleum gas, popularly called cooking gas. It said the cost of the commodity had been on the increase in the last two weeks and urged the government to intervene considering the current energy crisis in Nigeria as seen in the drop in power supply and petrol scarcity. The Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, MAN, has warned that the high cost of diesel used by manufacturers in Nigeria is expected to lead to high cost of goods and services due to the high cost of production. According to the group, the development could further deplete the purchasing power on Nigerians, tasking the federal government to reduce the pressure on the manufacturers and the entire population. The federal government has warned that depot owners selling fuel above the approved ex depot price in filling stations nationwide will be sanctioned. This was announced in a statement by the Minister of State for Petroleum, Timipri Silva. He stated that Nigerians are suffering because of the high diesel prices, adding that as a deregulated product, when crude prices are high, diesel prices are expected to rise as well. The Debt Management Office DMO has revealed that Nigeria's total public debt has risen to 39.55 trillion naira as of December 2021. This represents a 1.55 trillion naira or 4.1% increase in three months when compared to the 38 trillion naira total public debt that was recorded as of September 2021. Welcome back. Those were the stories that rounded up on Business Nigeria. Now, the increase in the value of POS transactions in Nigeria shows the spending patterns of Nigerians and payment preferences as compared to cash payments. However, we will talk about some of the issues that came up when Amben paid a visit to the House Committee on Banking and Currency as well as complaints of theft, counterfeited currency and training for regions. I'm now being joined by the National Publicity Secretary of Amban, Oluwa Shegun Elegbede. Many thanks for joining us on um, Business Insight and Plus TV Africa, Oluwa Shegun. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Yes, it is a pleasure. Let's just dive straight into it now. You know, 
there have been talks uh, as regards um, fake alert, and the House uh, asked uh, the central bank to introduce uh, stringent regulations for POS business. As an association, I'm ben so what's your position on this recently? I know you had um, a briefing concerning that. Yes, uh, one of the reasons why we had that uh, press conference was actually to put uh, things into the right perspective. Uh, some of those uh, items that were mentioned in the motion actually are uh, not as it, as it is. Uh, I would say in the motion it was alleged that uh, POS operators, um, POS agents uh, do fake alerts. Uh, for one, I can tell you that actually POS agents are victims of these fake alerts. Explain please. Because it is the uh, bad element in the public that come around pretending that they need cash. I know, and they will tell you they don't have their ATM cards with them. They have perfected uh, this cloning of fake alerts. And then most of the time they, they visit outlets where the owners of these uh, outlets are not there, where they have, you know, we use some staff. Most of them are school sats orders. So when, you, when they visit, you know, the staff will have to call the boss to know if the boss has gotten value for the transfer the customer claims to have made. And then, you know, they, 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 they do it in such a way that the, the owner will say to the staff that you can release cash. And then, at, as but, a, but why would the owner say they can release cash when they actually haven't gotten um, alerts? Because what they have done is to clone the alert of the banks. Mm. And they are suspecting um, owner of the, or, or even the agents. Some, sometimes they may, they may meet the person himself at his outlet. What happens is that, you know, in the rush to serve this customer, they exchange cash. And after they must have left, they discover that this customer has just come to dupe me. They have, they have gone away. So we are actually victims of this crime as, as being, um, said at the, at, the house, at the floor of the House of Assembly by Honorable Olajide Jimo. We, we acknowledge the fact that, yes, some of these things happened, but our members are actually victims. Number two that he said is uh, that uh, there are uh, counterfeit notes. Yes, we have received a lot of uh, incident cases from our members across the country where People, they come with, you know, large sum of money. They want to mm. do quick transfers to get some goods and all of that. And they will wrap, I mean, fake notes, just few, uh, just uh, few original ones on the, on, the, on the top. And they just guard it somehow. And, you know, they use this, uh, the, 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 this uh, I mean, they put pressure on the owner of the outlet to release cash. And these are things that, as Amban, we try to train our members for. You know, you know how to attend to customer, how not to be under pressure, so that you can you can be in charge, in control. When the customer walks into your outlet, you are not under his control. You need to be very calm in attending to them, so that you can actually uh, get to see if you are collecting a counterfeit notes. Let's talk about the counterfeited um, bills, uh, you know, for one more minute. And, you know, you talked about um, how your association, that is Amban trained members, on how they need to, you know, be calm so they don't fall victims. You know, so over time, do you also train your members on how to identify these counterfeited bills when it, um, they're being presented to them? Of course, uh, that's, that, is, that is one of the, we, we made in our meetings, we tried to let them know the, the true features of the Naira notes, the different denomination, for them to be able to identify. And then we also have been able to uh, get in some supplies of machines, the, oh. the, the small ones at very reduced rates that they can ha even have at the outlets. Okay. And uh, to also use to, I mean, validate if the notes that collecting a counterfeited or not. So this is part of what the association is doing. Okay, well, let's still talk about um, the um, sanity in this particular industry or association as it were. You know, because if you look at it now, practically every street, every nook and cranny, you go around Nigeria, you see uh, uh, POS um, operators or agents rather, you know, mounting, you know, their services operating, sometimes at um, very, you know, 
secluded places. Uh, sometimes are just umbrellas and chairs. Uh, some do with uh, the regular kiosk. But what is the standard really, and how do you ensure that um, you know there is sanity in the system? Because I also hear that uh, you are starting some sort of a task force. Let me say this: we are in agreement with the house to have some sort of sanity in our industry, in our business space. We are in agreement with them. If there's any stakeholder in this business space that has been clamoring for this enforcement of guidelines, it is Amban. And so we, we are in agreement of, of that. And let me say this, uh, in the motion, it was also posited that uh, there are no guidelines. No, business, our business did not, is not an happenstance. It was uh, a deliberate effort of the government to pushing uh, the effect of poverty and so to also deepen financial inclusion to the last mile. That was why this sector of the business was created. So having said that, there's a guideline. And so we also are of the opinion that the guideline must be strictly enforced. Mm. We, have, we understand when this started uh, like 10, 11 years ago, before you can become a mobile money or bank agent, you must have a brick and mortar or kiosk. I mean, an address that is traceable, that if anybody has an issue, they can easily. In fact, at that time, you also would need a letter from the community head or your market leader to also identify you that we know him because you have, you'll be dealing with the public fund. So what we have today that we have agents under the umbrella, under the trees, are pure violation of the guidelines. And these are the things that we frown at, at at our level, that if these are not nipped in the board, we are sitting on the keg of gunpowder. Mm. And so the association wants this enforcement of the guidelines that we have, the framework of the CBN. However, what we don't want is that uh, there, there, there shouldn't be any disconnect mm. between the government and we that are really at the last rung of the ladder. We want them to sit with us, let them, let them hear from us so that we can give them the realities that is obtainable out there. They can't just make laws for us when do, they do not even understand how the business operates. Mm. So that is where we are. Okay. All right, Lua Shego, um, I'll take a quick break, but when I come back, I will also need you to, you know, you know just uh, give us some, you know, a uh, clear way to go as regards uh, some gray areas that uh, people have talked about. Uh, for instance, uh, there are talks about uh, you know, uh, the, P the POS merchant, uh, all the surrounding banks, and they make, they allegedly make um, the, the ATMs uh, not to work. It's still Business Insight on Plus TV Africa. We still have Olua Shagu Elegbede uh, with us in the studios. We'll take a quick break and return with more. Do join us again. Uh, welcome back to Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. We're looking at uh, financial inclusion vis-a-vis uh, -vis the operations of uh, mobile money and, of course, bank agents in Nigeria to ensure sanity because uh, there have been lots of complaints, you know, uh, concerning the operations. And we have uh, Oluwa Shego Elegbede with us here in the studios. So, Oluwa Shego, let's talk more concerning that. Uh, is there any truth to the fact that... Uh, uh, these POS operators, they <laughs> allegedly, it sounds funny though, they allegedly, you know, make, I don't know, some sort of a co co collaboration or maybe with bank officials or I don't know, sometimes uh, you, be, you notice that they're always around banks and then um, somehow the ATMs don't work and um, lo and behold, you have uh, the POS uh, agents to your rescue. Yeah, just like I've said, there are allegations and they are laughable. Um, one of the roles that we have come to play, and then I will say categorically that if all mobile money and bank agents down tools today, the banks cannot handle the, the traffic that they generate. They cannot. Because practically most people don't even go for bank for withdrawals or transfers these days. These days you see people with their shorts just walk out of their room to the nearest uh, outlet to make mm. withdrawals. So the fact is, there are different networks 
that uh, the different uh, switches, mm. the banks, ATM, the POS, even with POS A and POS B, there are different switches. You can you discover that the the next uh, outlet will tell you it doesn't have network on its POS terminal. Mm. Then you discover that when you go to the next one, you are able to do your transaction. Does it mean the uh, POS here has sabotaged the network of POSB? No. Just like you have for telcos, where you can say uh, there's no network on your own line, and the other person will say, I have network here. That is how this operates. It is pure technology. But when you see that people swarm around ATM points, number one, that is even wrong because you're not supposed to hawk. Yeah, they're supposed to have uh, the visible locations. A visible location. You're not yeah. supposed to hawk. It is not, it is not bread and puff puff. This is financial service. Oh. You have to be in, in, a, in, a, in, an, in a standard location where people come to you because you must record your transactions. So you, when, when you see people walk around, because they know that th there's a limit to what they can load in the machines. And then on weekends, most times, the bank staff have gone home. They only come back to, to check and reload. So at that point, between the time the, the machine is not dispensing again, and the point they are reloaded, you know, that availability gap is what the POS agent that hawk around makes use of, or those that even have outlets mm. around the bank. There's nobody supporting you. The fact is, we have a large population that the banks, as, it, as we have them today, cannot cater for. All right, uh, let's try and understand um, something else now. You talked about mobile money operators, you talked about bank agents. Uh, I'll need you to just give a bit of a differentiation between both of them. And then again, uh, is this an all commerce affairs as it is right now? Or because sometimes you find uh, people ordinarily, you know, it's, it's as though practically everywhere you go, you just see uh, people with uh, POS, even those uh, who do other business, they just put the POS by, you know, on the side, and they also see their uh, agent as well. So I need you to explain the difference between a mobile money operator and, of course, the, uh, the bank agent or POS agent, as it were, and then how uh, accessible is it to just get a POS? Okay, so there are two set of institutions hmm. that um, are in the... Uh, are playing in the field. Mm. Uh, we have the bank led and the non bank led. The bank led, I mean, you have um, some banks who have the, the, the core agency banking structure. Mm. They have it. They are, I, I don't want to begin to mention names. Then you also have the non bank led, the MMOs, mm. who also have the license to operate mm. as a player in the industry. So you can get uh, provide by any of these yeah, okay. uh, set of institutions. Mm. That is one. Number two, it is not an all-commerce affair. It is just because of the enforcement of the framework and guidelines that we're talking about that is not really in place. And that's why we, as an association, are talking about self-regulation mm. because we see that things are going down the drain and we know what efforts some of the pioneers of this business have put in and we do not want that to go to waste. So it is not a lot commerce affair. Number one, you need to have a visible location. You need to be known. Of course, it's like you're opening a bank account. Mm. All the requirements of opening a bank account are required for you to supply, it, to have a provider with any of the institutions that you have chosen. Mm. And then, of course, uh, there has to be spacing. We, what we have today is that uh, you see agents cluster around a small area mm -hmm. in a place where you, don't, you just have 50 you seem to be so localized. Mm -hmm. I mean, one person is serving that 50 people. Then you see that in the next two months, another five have, has, has come. The customers are not increasing. So how does um, um, Amban ensure that that does not happen? That is what the task force that we have integrated now, uh, they are going to, uh, it's going to ensure across the nation, the tax force is going to begin to go out. We piloted this uh, last year in Oyo State, and we saw the result. We've, we went out and we saw that many of these agents are just operating. They don't have any record of any, any kind. Hmm. You know, you know, and these are things that are just primary requirements. As an agent, you must have your record book where you record your transactions. Hmm. If anything happens in 2018 then you go back to your record open it and i mean it has saved a lot of people but okay. what you, you find out today is that even transaction of yesterday 
Some agents will tell you they don't have any record for it. So invariably, they should be keeping um, records of every transaction. Every transaction. Any type of transaction. Because in, in transaction, we mean withdrawal, we mean deposit, we mean oh, big payments. Okay. So all of these have to be in a proper book with the dates. Mm. And that is how you are able to also track your own fund too, okay. to know if you are making profit or not. Yeah, no. So you, you don't just get into the business just to throw away money. That is what majority of the people are doing out there. All right. But I know this in so many ways, uh, you know, has um, helped a lot of um, unemployed youths, you know, because practically most people wouldn't just want to fold their arms. Uh, school leavers have taken, uh, you know, into this particular business. But then again, I need to understand one more thing. You, would you say the banks are, in a way, liable, you know, with this issue of um, proliferation of... Uh, you know, POS uh, agents um, all over the place because I've heard a school of thought um, say uh, that uh, most times uh, they just want to meet target and also they just go about uh, uh, giving uh, POS um, randomly. Is this true? Yeah, uh, I, I, I would say yes. Uh, not banks alone now. Mm. Yeah, the MMOs too. Okay, the mobile money operators, uh, yeah. If, if, if there are people that have really uh, have the this uh, non-challenge uh, attitude to our approach to enforce the uh, guidelines i mean there are some players who will tell their agents that uh, being their principal they will tell them don't join amban and we are telling them we are not in competition with you it is for us to have sanity to have sanity in, in the business space so that everybody will be fine now if all of us come together as everybody in the value chain come together, we understand the problems that we have and we see to how we can resolve all of this and have a better business space, better for us. Mm. We cannot say, and, and in all of this, they invest more. And there were times gone by where, um, I mean, some, some of them were observing these guidelines. Okay. But when they saw that some people were not doing the same, they joined the fray. I mean, it's now like Banana Republic. That is what we are saying. That's, well, that's why we are saying we do not want this kind of situation. All right. All right we just uh, believe and hope that uh, in a matter of um, time, a very small time, that um, you know, these issues that would be adequately addressed and um, you know, all of um, this insanity you know, that we find in this particular uh, sector will be completely uh, be done with over time. Well, Marcel, a very big thank you to you as well for finding time to join us to look at all of these issues. Thank you for having me. All right, indeed, uh, we have been speaking with um, Oluwa Shegun Elegbede. He is the National Public Relations Officer of, the, uh, of AMBAN, which is the Association of Mobile Money and Bank Agents of Nigeria. Now, that's the size of the show for today. I am Justin Akadunye. Let's do it again next time. Bye for now. <laughs>